virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which is translated, God is with us. Hallelujah. How many of you believe God is with us today? God is with us today. Hallelujah. You will allow me to teach a little bit, and then we will have fun. Amen. 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 Christmas. Among all the Christians that I know from back home to here, we have always two groups. One group does not want to celebrate Christmas. The other group wants to celebrate Christmas, and they fight. Hallelujah. Even though in the Bible there is no legitimate scriptural reason not to celebrate Christmas, there is no either a biblical mandate to celebrate it. So the Bible does not say you have to celebrate Christmas, but the Bible does not say either you don't have to celebrate Christmas. Hallelujah. So because of that, some will say don't, and some will say do. Some will say, because everyone is celebrating Christmas, even pagans, even my neighbor who was celebrating yesterday, Halloween, then you, you should stay away from that. I hope today I will clarify that so we know why we're here. Hallelujah. Yes, the Bible does not tell us when Jesus was born. I explained that yesterday. So was Jesus born on 25th? No. Was Jesus born in December? No. Does the Bible say when Jesus was born? No. But does the Bible give any kind of instructions on how and when to celebrate Jesus? No. So, are we breaking any biblical law by celebrating Jesus? No. Hallelujah. Is it a sin to celebrate Jesus? His, his birthday? No. I love that. No. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it becomes a personal decision whether to celebrate Jesus or not. Amen? But here at CPF, I mean Cross Point Fellowship, we do celebrate Christmas. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because Christmas is an occasion, is an opportunity to proclaim that Christ is the reason for the season. Not only for us, but for the entire world. Hallelujah. Even in China, where they track down Christians and they will kill them, where they meet on the ground to, to praise our Lord, our King, the one who called to existence something did not exist. They have to hide on the ground to celebrate Christ. Even there, they do celebrate Christmas because they remember Jesus. Even in India, where they burn an entire church with people inside, they kill pastors, they kill whoever is Christian. Hallelujah. Even there, they do celebrate Jesus sometimes. Hallelujah. For us, it's an occasion, an opportunity to celebrate our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Right now, as I'm talking, in Russia, in Africa, all over the place, they are celebrating the birth of Jesus. But you, you will ask me a question. If the Bible does not talk about Christmas, even the word Christmas, why do we celebrate that? I will try my best to respond to those questions. Because now I know you do have them. Amen. Amen. First of all, we celebrate Christmas we celebrate Jesus to honor his birth. Amen. Remember what the book of Luke chapter 2, verse 10 and 11 says. I bring to you good news that will cause great 
joy to all the people. Hallelujah. Are you among those people? Yes. Amen. Yes. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what the angel said. This is an excitement for me. Christian, and here at CPF, we celebrate uh, uh, Jesus because the angel said, the birth of Jesus Christ is good news. Good news. What do you do when they bring you a good news? Hallelujah. Some of you, if I give you a good news, you are going to run here by yourself. Hallelujah. Good news means celebrate. When there is a good news, you celebrate. Some of us celebrate even their birthday. They remember when themselves were born. Hallelujah. And they celebrate. I have seen on Facebook, some people say, happy birthday to myself. <laughs> have, you, have you ever seen that? It looks like no one has said that to them. So this is very important. So regardless if people say happy birthday to you or not, you can even do and say happy birthday to yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a good news. Come on. As I read, the angel said again, Jesus' birth will cause great joy, not sorrow. From across the, 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 the nations, we hear people celebrate because there is, let's say, let's say an election. Oh, this person has been elected. Everyone is happy. It's a great joy. I always say, for how long? The only great joy is Jesus. Amen. Not people. Not Nelson Mandela. Not Donald Trump. Not Obama, Barack Obama. No. no not Donald Trump. No. Amen. <laughs> the, the angel said, Jesus' birth will cause great joy. And will be for all the people. Don't worry if Christians are being chased down in, in, in India or in, in China. It's just a matter of time. Hallelujah. Amen. It's just a matter of time. So people around the world are glad during this occasion. When you go home, you're going to watch your TV, and then you will see light, and then countries, and then cities, Rome, and uh, whatever places, you're going to see all of that because people are happy. Christian or not, Muslim or not, everyone remember Jesus. Amen. Here we celebrate the birth because the angel said one thing. He said, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is the Lord. Here I recognize one thing, Jesus' titles, three of them, Savior, Messiah, and Lord. Yes. Angel talks to someone and say, Jesus will be the Savior, will be the Messiah, and will be the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you read the book of Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, it says, Jesus is the Savior who deliver us from sin and from death. Yes, Hallelujah. That is the reason we are celebrating. Yes. We, have been the, we have been, our sins were purchased. We have been redeemed. Hallelujah. Have you been redeemed? Yes. Hallelujah. The book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 says, and this is Jesus talking, do not misunderstand, do not misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses 
or the writings of the prophets, but I came to accomplish their purpose. Are you following me? So this means Jesus is the divine Lord. Hallelujah. Who, who has entered our world? It was a choice. A choice he made. He made out of love. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is the almighty that has chosen, that has taken a human flesh. He chose to die for our sins. Amen. Jesus is a God and man combined, fused together. The book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 says, See, the virgin will become pregnant mm -hmm. and give birth to a son. And they will name him Emmanuel, which is God is with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All those people who do not recognize Jesus, love Jesus, follow Jesus, I don't know what kind of Bible they read. I wouldn't have any hesitation if I read Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. There is no confusion absolutely known. God is with us. Today, you and me are happy because God is with us. Amen. Here at Cross Point, we celebrate the Savior because we need deliverance, because we recognize that God is with us. He came to save us. I know we do a little more. We do gift, giving, exchange. We do all of that. The book of, the second book of Corinthians chapter 9 verse 15 says that Jesus is the indescribable gift that God gave us. So the first person who started this, this gift thing is God himself. He gave us Jesus as a gift. Hallelujah. So don't feel sorry if you need to give a gift to a person. Hallelujah. God himself gave Jesus to us as a gift. Amen. Amen. I know as well we like lights. There is no Christmas without lights. Guess what? The book of John, chapter 1, verse 4. Even Isaiah says... The light of the world has come to us. Brothers and sisters, when your neighbor is celebrating Halloween, there is no light. It has to be dark. It's scary. You hide things. Amen? Christmas is a totally different old story. We need light. We need to see each other. We need to see your smile. Hallelujah. I need to see your joy. Amen. It's only Jeff who, who can smile here. I need to see your joy, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Talking about lights and gifts, we, all, we also have a tree, Christmas tree. I know some people say out there that um, you cannot have a Christmas tree. It's not biblical. It's wrong. And they even say, Jeremiah said that. It has been falsely claimed that Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 1 to 16, prohibits Christmas trees. It is completely wrong. Go buy your Christmas tree, even today. It is even cheaper today. The whole story around the Christmas tree it's simple. At that time, people were cutting trees down to make what? Idols. The book of Isaiah chapter 44 speaks of the, the silliness of those idol worshippers who will cut down trees, burn part of it to warm themselves with fire. But they will use the other part to make idols and to bow to those idols. That's the reason Jeremiah spoke about um, trees. This has nothing to do with our Christmas trees. Amen? Am I making myself clear? Amen. I just want to free yourself today. Free about Christmas. You have to be free. 
eh, from all the crazy ideas that we hear out there. You have to be free. Amen. Be free to celebrate Jesus. Be free to celebrate Jesus on Monday. If you choose not to celebrate on Tuesday, it's not a problem. But be free to celebrate another day. Amen. Hallelujah. Again and again. Be free to celebrate Jesus in the morning or in the evening. In January or in December. Right. Hallelujah. Be free. It's our Savior. He gave his life for us to have life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to celebrate with a tree? Be free. Amen. Without a tree, be free. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's move on. Jesus is not a baby in the manger. Hallelujah. It's not a baby. Jesus, I explained to you yesterday, I said, okay, Mary was the mother of Jesus, but Mary was not the mother of God because God existed before Mary. Hallelujah. So I repeat it today again. Jesus was before Mary was. Amen? Amen? So Jesus is not that baby. Everyone will go to church on, on December today just to see the baby in the manger. Actually, there is not even a baby in there. <laughs> Brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen? There is nothing. Amen. Amen? Let me give a little more about Jesus. The book of John chapter 10, verse 30 says, I and the Father are one. Yes. Jesus and the Father are one. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 58, declares, I tell you the truth. Before Abraham was born, I am. Jesus says, I am. That means I was, I am, and I will be. I was always there. When Mary got pregnant, I was. Before she was pregnant, I was. In your life, I am. In any situation you are going through, I am. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The book of John, chapter 8, uh, chapter 1, verse 1 to 14 says, The word, which is Jesus, was God, and the word became flesh. Hallelujah. Jesus is God. Amen. Amen. In Hebrew, chapter 1, verse 8, the Father declares of Jesus, but about the Son, he is your throne, O God, will last forever and, 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 and ever. And righteousness will be scepter of your kingdom. So you see that the Father himself refers to Jesus, O God. This indicates that Jesus is indeed God. Amen. So Jesus is not that baby in the manger that every 25th of every year is born. Hallelujah. Amen. He is our God. Amen. We are mature and we are educated. So we have to understand that. Why? Because our mission is to go out there and spread the word. Amen. You cannot spread something you do not know or something you are not confident in. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Hundreds of years before the birth of Christ, the prophet Isaiah uh, Talking about the coming of Messiah, said in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. How many people you have ever heard in your life or oh, reading the Bible from the beginning to the end, or oh, any kind of book, a person is called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. None but Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. When the angel spoke to Joseph to announce the upcoming birth of Jesus, he said, in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 23, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, God with us. I'm removing any doubt that could be in your mind about who Jesus is. He was, he is, he will be. 
Him and God are one. One person. Hallelujah. Jesus was God coming in the flesh to dwell with, with us men. You understand that there is a purpose. Jesus did not come here because he, he, he's God. So he wanted to be like a man and see how he goes. No. There was a purpose. Hallelujah. So we're here to learn certain things. We're here to learn that purpose as well. Why did Jesus come for me? Who am I? Me. You. Amen? Amen? I'm saying there is a purpose because everyone was born with a purpose. Uh, absolutely. My purpose is different from your purpose. But everyone has a purpose. But I, I know some of us, before you were born, if the purpose was revealed to you, hmm? <laughs> you could have said, never mind. You think, no, 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 I'm going back. <laughs> Hallelujah. But one person who knew the, his purpose, that was to die. Yeah. To die. Even if all of us will go to heaven. Amen? No one here, nobody, can go out there and say, okay, take my life. I want to be an example. Just kill me. No. <laughs> Even, even if you're poor, eh? you're sleeping under the bridges. If they want to kill you, you will cry like it's not possible. <laughs> Hallelujah. But one person knew their purpose. Knew that the purpose was to come and die and die for you. Mm -hmm. Die for everyone who wants him. Hallelujah. And that is Jesus. You're here. You have to know that. Amen. Amen. Let me go back a little bit to the beginning so we understand why Jesus came and chose to die for us. Amen. In the beginning, we know that God created the earth and the man, and everything was perfect. Perfect. And for sure, Adam and Eve disobeyed God's commands. You know the story. They had to be punished. They had to be punished. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, What you get when you sin is death. Okay? But the gift that God freely gives us is everlasting life that is found in Jesus Christ our Lord. So when you sin, okay, the consequence of sin is death. There is no way out. Amen? Amen? But because God is love and he loves you very much, he found a way out for you. He said, I will send a savior that will defeat death for you because you have no power. I will send a savior that will save you. Jesus was our, is our savior. He is the one who came to defeat death for us. Amen? Because all of us, me included, we are all sinners. Yes, we are. So God's plan to save us is perfect. People may say, you God, why did you come and die and then go back? I do not question that. And I'm asking you not to question that. Because the ways of God are not our ways. But what I know, the ways of God are perfect. God's plan is perfect. So you are not allowed to question that. Because his, his ways are perfect. Hallelujah. So let's talk about a sin. Most people think that a sin is when you kill someone, when you commit murder, blasphemy, or when you love money too much, eh? or when you hate your enemy, when you are full of pride, you know, those are sins. From that little list that I just say, you can understand that we are all sinners. So among us, maybe we have murders, maybe we have adulterers, 
I'm pretty sure we have people who really love money. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> Maybe too much. <laughs> eh? <laughs> or some people, they are proud, too proud. So we sin every day. We sin in the morning. We sin all the time. Hallelujah. But praise God, there is Jesus. Amen. Praise God, we have the Holy Spirit that can tell us you are sinning. And then you back up. Maybe yesterday you were sinning this much. And today, you, you know, you're cutting down your, your, your sins. Just because of the Holy Spirit who is convincing us. Amen. So you and me, my friend, we are sinners. And without Jesus... Eh? We will rot in hell. Amen? Amen. Praise God for Jesus. Amen. Praise God for Jesus. Amen. If you are here and you are not Christian, I know in our church everyone comes. Eh? We do not ask people at the door, are you Christian or not? No. Everyone comes. Muslims come. Um, whatever you can imagine, we open our door for everyone. Amen. So I'm talking to those who do not know Jesus who have never invited Jesus in their heart. And who believe that when you behave well, you will make it to heaven. No, you will rot in hell. <laughs> Amen? Because good behavior cannot save you. Hallelujah? Good works cannot save you. Mohammed cannot save you. Bura cannot save you. The Bible says there is only one name, yeah. and the one name can save you. And that name is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But what happened before Jesus? You may ask yourself that question. Before Jesus, God, because he is love, he had found a way to help the children of Israel. Every single year. They will take a, an innocent lamb and sacrifice that lamb. Because of the compassion and everything you feel, God will forgive your sins when you sacrifice the lamb. It was called atonement. But that lamb was not perfect too. Hallelujah. So we needed something higher. We needed something greater. We need something perfect that can cover every single person. Hallelujah. Jesus is our lamb. Jesus is our sacrifice. Hallelujah. He sacrificed his life for the remission of our sins. For the remission of the sins of whoever believe in him. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you have a friend who does not believe in Jesus... Hallelujah. Go, tell them that I said Jesus died for them as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He died for that they could become free. He died for the remission of their sins as well. Yes. Amen. The second book of Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 21, said, says, God made Christ, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we may become the righteousness of of God in him. Hallelujah. Amen. This is pure love. Pure love. It is. It is. Person without sin comes, becomes sin for you. Hallelujah. Because the salary of sin is death, so he had to die. But because he's God, and death cannot hold him down, yeah. he had to resurrect. Yeah. But he had to die before. <laughs> Hallelujah. So from Adam to Jesus, God sent prophets to us, to mankind, just to warn us about the punishment, about the consequence of sin, but also about the coming of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. From the beginning to the end, if you read the Bible, even in Genesis, from the beginning, God said, I will send someone who will redeem you from death. From the beginning, 
Hallelujah. The last person God sent to us was John the Baptist. It's a, just a coincidence that I'm John the Baptist. It, it's just a true coincidence. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I have the anointing of John the Baptist. <laughs> My mission is to prepare the way. Yes. Repent. Hallelujah. Yes. So, John the Baptist was sent to prepare the way. Hallelujah. His job was to baptize people, to ask people to repent, hallelujah, because the Messiah was coming. Whoever read the Bible, everyone, even John the Baptist, the prophets had said there will be someone that will come to prepare the way. So when that person came, most people resisted, but some did not. The Bible said a lot of people went to be baptized because they know the Messiah was coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. If you're here and you have never been baptized, there is no fees. We can do it even tonight if you want. Amen? Amen. But Sunday will be probably better. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> The book of Isaiah, chapter 40, <laughs> verse 3 to 5, says that many years ago, they were talking about John the Baptist. And the book says, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. That highway is in your heart, okay? Every valley should be raised up. Every mountain and hill made low. Amen. The rough ground shall become level. The rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all mankind together will see it. Amen. Hallelujah. Remember the light. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This was said hundred of years before John the Baptist came. Hallelujah. I spoke about John the Baptist yesterday when I was uh, preaching about Mary. You know that Jesus met John the Baptist when John the Baptist was six, not six months old. <laughs> Elizabeth, his mother, was pregnant six months. So we can say minus, minus what? Months, three months. Amen. Amen. <laughs> because John the Baptist had a mission. Amen. He had to come at a specific time. Yeah. Amen. At a specific time. So Elizabeth, the Bible says, she was old. The Bible says she was very old. Which means she was really very old. Everything was old. Hallelujah. You, you walk like a person who is old. you old. But she did not have kids. But, but John the Baptist had to be born in that house. But here we have parents who are very old, who do not even have any, who do not have kids. I remember his father, Zachariah, doubted about what Jesus was about to do. And because of that, he became mute. I think God was not happy about it, and so you will be mute. Hallelujah. And he became mute at that very moment. Hallelujah. So this mother was living right. In the Old Testament, if a couple does not have kids, they will say these people are not doing the right thing. They are living in sin. But Elizabeth and the husband were not living in sin. They loved God. They were living right. But yet they did not have a child. But because there was a promise. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. When God promises you something, that thing will come to happen. Amen. Even if you get old. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
They were very old, as the Bible says, but they became pregnant. Six months old, I mean six months pregnant. That's the time Mary as well, who was now pregnant. Remember what I told you yesterday? Two people who were not supposed to be pregnant found themselves pregnant. One was very old, old. I mean, I don't know how to, de to describe that. She found herself uh, pregnant and she did not know. On the other side, we have a young lady, 13, 14, 15, I don't know, who found herself pregnant, no husband. I mean, what is that? So two people who were not supposed to be pregnant found themselves pregnant. And Mary goes to Elizabeth because she needed some comfort. But the angel has told Mary that Elizabeth, your relative, will get pregnant as well. So she was also going to give the good news to Elizabeth. Hallelujah. So Elizabeth was pregnant. Probably she did not even know she was pregnant. It's an experience that she, did not, she, she never had. When you get to that age, you never had a baby. You have no clue what is happening. Hallelujah. Amen. And the baby was like dead. When Mary greeted Elizabeth, the baby in the belly jumped. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Brothers and sisters, that baby who was like dead came to life. Amen. And Elizabeth knew that I have a baby. And everything the, the angel told them came to life. Oh my God, this thing is happening. So the Messiah is happening because there is life in me. Hallelujah. Elizabeth knew she was carrying a baby just because of that contact with the Messiah. When you get in contact with the Messiah, you change. You change. If you are mute, you talk. If you are well blind, you see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are like dead, you jump. Amen. Elizabeth knew she was carrying a baby. And Elizabeth knew the baby was alive. Hallelujah. Amen. So, you see at what age John met Jesus? They were not born yet. And there was communication already. Because they had a mission. Amen. Elizabeth knew that the promises of God are yes and amen. amen. Even if I become old because I received the promise, it will come to pass. Amen. The promises of God are yes and amen. amen. Do you have a promise that God has given you? Yes. Oh, let me proclaim, it's coming to pass. Amen. It is coming to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're carrying something you think is dead. You haven't seen a movement yet. I know it happens. God gives you a promise, and because of the delay, because of the fact you don't see any movement, you get discouraged. You listen to the people who are talking, whatever. But wait until you meet Jesus. Wait until you meet him, hallelujah. So do not give up. I say, behold, Jesus was, Jesus is, and Jesus is to come. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, in the presence of Jesus, there is life and there is life abundantly. Amen. You tell me if the Bible says Elizabeth was pregnant and the baby was giving her a hard time. No. It's only Elizabeth met Mary. Mary who was what? One week pregnant? Maybe two weeks pregnant? Eh? Life. The baby was now kicking. The baby want, wanted to go out. Because it was too much, the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord changes people, brothers and sisters. Nothing resists to the presence of the Lord. Amen. Nothing resists to Jesus. Even death, we were singing, was unable to hold me, to hold him down. Amen. What do you have today that is resisting? What do you have today that you believe is dead? Hallelujah. Do you have anything that has been delayed? Or anything that has been de uh, dead? A dream that you have abandoned? Tonight, I'm telling you, Jesus is breathing in your direction. He is breathing in your direction. 
He is breathing you in a direction. Receive it. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive. Brothers and sisters, there is something magnificent about Jesus. There is something about Jesus. I remember the, the, the story in the Bible about Matthew, the tax collector. Hallelujah. Once again, nothing to, to do with me. Nothing. So Matthew was a tax collector. Tax collector at that time were rich. Okay? Now, nowadays is a different story. <laughs> Amen? At that time, it was a very good job. You had a good position. You're overseeing everything. Amen. Amen. And everyone respects you. Amen. Amen. And Jesus came by. Praise the Lord. Jesus came by. I told you in the presence of the Lord, there must be a change. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. What did Jesus do? Jesus asked Matthew to come. Follow me. Matthew dropped his dream job. He dropped the money. Hmm? Because when you were a tax collector at that time, money was coming from all over the place. Hallelujah. Matthew dropped everything just because he met the Lord. Unbelievable. He followed the Lord. The Lord. He rose and followed him. Hallelujah. Position, money, friends, everything he left. There is something magnificent about Jesus. How many believe that? There is something about Jesus. That's the reason we're here about, uh, tonight. Hallelujah. There is something. I don't know what it is. Is it a compelling force? Is it something irresistible? I don't know what it is. And, but tonight, Jesus is telling you, rise up, you too, and follow me. Amen. I know we post our video on, on YouTube, and people will be following us. Tonight, Jesus is telling you, rise up and follow me. You may be a doctor. You may be a, a lawyer. You may be an engineer. Tonight, Jesus is saying, rise up and follow me. I have life and I have life abundantly. You have money, do not worry. Seek first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And everything else will be given unto you. That is the most important thing. Change your agenda. Jesus is calling you today. Amen. 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 Seek first the kingdom of God. Amen. And everything else will be given unto you, will be added unto you. Hallelujah. Amen. I pray for those who have not made a decision to follow Jesus. Let today be the day. Amen. Let today be the day. You will take a firm decision, I'm following Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. If you take a decision today to follow Jesus, guess what? Money will be added unto you. Amen. Good job will be added to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything will be added unto you. That's what God says. Hallelujah. You want to be an engineer? May, let engineering be your portion. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What happened to Matthew after? Matthew called all his friends. All the tax collectors is okay, man. I have to share this. I have met someone. I have met a person who changed me. You have to see him. You have to hear Jesus. You have. He brought everyone to his house. He threw a party and he invited Jesus. All the sinners, all the people who were taking people's money, all of them came to listen to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Jesus ate dinner at Matthew's house. Many tax collectors and other bad people came. And the Bible says this, because the Pharisees were there checking and trying to understand what's going on. You said you were the Savior. What are you doing with these people? Are you trying to find a way to take our money? Hey, what is that? Amen. Amen. So the Bible says, the Pharisees now were asking Jesus, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and other bad people? Hmm? They were outside. 
Okay? One window was open. So they tried to speak to someone. <laughs> you, what are you doing? What are you doing eating with uh, bad people? But you cannot hide something to Jesus. You cannot murmur to your friend and thinking Jesus cannot hear you. Jesus can hear you. And Jesus heard them. And Jesus responded. Healthy people don't need a doctor. It is the sick people that need a doctor. Right. Hallelujah. Our responsibility, the reason we're here tonight, hallelujah, is not only to celebrate Jesus. It's to be reminded of what Jesus told us. Go and spread. And to remember that healthy people do not need a doctor. Hallelujah. It's people who are sick who need a doctor. Hallelujah. A year ago, a few months, Pastor Nadia stood here and said, okay, I'm going to Montreal. This city is an abomination. It's living in sin. I am going there, I'm going to fight. Because sick people need God. Our mission at Cross Point is to go, to go and spread. It's not an easy choice. It is not easy. Actually, it's difficult. You leave your friend, you leave your house, you leave the family, and you go fight. Fight for who? For sinners. Fight for people who are drunk every day. Fight for people who are cursing every day. I have been in Montreal. I have been there. All the symbols of Catholic faith are insults. If someone says to you, tabernacle, that is the greatest insult here in Canada, in Montreal. And that's where Cross Point chose to go. Not one church, but three churches. It's a battle at all fronts. Why? Because we understand our role and our responsibility. It is okay. Thank you. It is okay to come here and celebrate Jesus was born. Hallelujah, Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I know that. Our life is very short, like this. We have people who were here last year, this year right now, they are not. We have to understand that celebrating is okay, it's good, it's fun, it's fantastic. But we have a mission. We have to go do the mission we have been given. Celebrate today, but tomorrow, go back on duty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I received a prayer from a lady in this church. And then I said, I'm going to read the prayer for you. Because the prayer touched my heart. She said, Jesus came to die for us. Jesus is not a baby in a manger. She is the son of the living God. Jesus took our sins to the cross. He died and rose and went to heaven. He sent his, his, his church, Cross Point, to go all over the world and tell them the good news. That is exactly what we're doing. Apostle does not speak Spanish, but we have seven Cross Point churches in Nicaragua, where they, <laughs> hallelujah, where they speak in Spanish. Brothers and sisters, we're going somewhere just because we have understood the, this, the meaning of Jesus for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Unto us a gift was given. The Lord Jesus who has and is a blessing to us. He is Lord of Lords, way maker, miracle worker. Hallelujah. He is our protector, our best friend, lights our path, turns our disappointment around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is our joy and our peace, our righteousness, our happiness, our provider, our defender, our healer, our freedom, our smile, our sunshine. He is our destiny and the promise keeper. He is our all in one. Hallelujah. We can't exhaust his nature. His desire to take his, thr his throne in our life to that we write with joy. Brothers and sisters, this is my prayer for you. This is what Jesus is. 
for me and Jesus is for you. Jesus is not a baby in a manger. He is our protector. Hallelujah. I would like to move to closing slowly. The coming, of, of, the coming and death of Jesus means something very important. I wouldn't close without talking to this. Yes, we understand the, the mission we have. We have to reach out to people. We have to spread the word. We have to share a good news. You don't keep it. Even people who earn millions. Hmm? Oh, they say, oh, this person, someone earned 50 millions. But we do not know who the person is. And I said, just wait a second. <laughs> they will come out. You cannot keep such thing. A good news is something that has to go out. Do not keep it for yourself. Amen. But tonight, because of many people who have been wounded, who have been hurt, back home, here, in families, at workplace, I would like to say that forgiveness is what brought Jesus here. He came to forgive our sins. He came to buy our sins. So forgiveness is something very important to me. And it should be important to you as well. The word forgiveness means pardon. Like to, to cancel someone's debt. You, you, you forgive. Hallelujah. Forgiveness is not granted. Because a person deserves it. Ah, silence. Hallelujah. Forgiveness is not granted because a person deserves to be forgiven. You give freely. Jesus gave freely. Yes. Hallelujah. A person wrongs you, forgive them. Free yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. No one will ever deserve to be forgiven. Amen. Amen. Forgiveness is an act of love, mercy, and grace. Forgiven. Forgiveness is a decision not to hold resentment, bitterness towards someone. Despite everything they have done to you, the Bible tells us that we are in need of forgiveness from God. Do not believe you do not need God. You do not need God to forgive you. You do. Hallelujah. And for most of us, you have a lot of people around you to forgive. And you have to forgive yourself too. So this is an exercise you have to start today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All of us, we have committed sin. Remember what I said, Jesus came to give his life. So we can be free, we can be forgiven. Hallelujah. So how do you get for God's forgiveness? How do you get God's forgiveness and avoid death? Remember... The wage of sin is death. So how do you avoid death? God desires to forgive you. And actually, he provided a way to be forgiven. Remember his plan, his perfect plan for him, God, to become a human. That we read in the book of John, chapter 1. Remember that died, Jesus died on the cross. But by dying on the cross, he took the penalty that you deserve. You were the one who committed sin. You were the one who was supposed to die, but he took that from you. So you could continue to live and live eternally. Hallelujah. He took your punishment. And he provides forgiveness. Not only for yourself, actually for the entire world. Receiving God's forgiveness, brothers and sisters, is easy. Receiving Jesus is not complicated. It is easy. Hallelujah. Thank you. You can't earn forgiveness from God. You can earn forgiveness from God today. Amen. I said it is easy. Hallelujah. You do not buy God's forgiveness. And you can earn it today. You can't pay for forgiveness. 
you will never have enough money to pay Jesus for what he has done for us. You can only receive it and you receive by faith, by the grace of God. That's how we received forgiveness, by grace. He chose us. He chose us. How many other people, even from your own family, who are not here, who even don't know what we're talking about? It is by grace that we're saved. If you want to accept Jesus in your heart, I can guarantee you that you will receive forgiveness. Amen. You will receive forgiveness. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are here tonight, or if you follow this on YouTube, and you say, I want Jesus' forgiveness. He came, he died, so I could have life. I want life and life eternally. Amen. If that's your case, I would like you to pray with me. I would like all of us to pray. Amen. Close your eyes and pray. God, I know that I have sinned against you. And I, have, I deserve punishment. But Jesus Christ took the punishment that I deserve. So that through faith in him, I could be forgiven. I place my trust in you for salvation. I invite you right now in my heart. Come and touch me. Come and cleanse me. Come, come and change me. Hallelujah. Thank you for your wonderful grace. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for the life that you're giving me. Thank you for accepting me the way I am. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you're here and this is your first time to pray this prayer, if you, never, you have never prayed this prayer before, show us your hand. This is important and we'd like to celebrate you. Too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's my youngest brother, by the way. Hallelujah. May God be the center of everything for you, Joe, in 2019. Remember, today you were born again. And tomorrow, you'll be the one going to spread the news. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are on mission right now. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid. Do not go back, but move forward. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. For all my brothers and sisters who are here, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Amen. Hallelujah.